Hello you guys, this is Serpent the Night, and I came across this very interesting I1 Display 2 Professional Monitor Calibration Vise at my local used store for tool 38 if you can read it, if it focuses. Either way, um, I kind of want to test this on my three, well my two desktop monitors and my laptop monitor which I have all set up, um, but the device itself, it seems interesting, it's just, it's a device to correct the color content, it's supposed to correct for your um, ambient light and for, it works for LCDs, CRTs, and laptops, which that's why I'm going to put to the test because I don't know if it for sure works or whatnot. Either way, supposedly on Amazon this is a hundred dollar device or a sixty dollar device if it's this this one currently is a hundred and nineteen the lowest and if it's I as in the letter I one and then one is just in the number one then it's like sixty so I don't know if that's an older model or what but I'm going to test it um yeah I just bought this I am well I guess I'll unbox it quick. As far as I know, this is uh, everything in it that was supposed to be in it, but it is used, but I mean, such be it. So, we got the actual device, which should focus here, and it's an interesting device. Um, I1 display two part number revision A, so probably first production revision. Um, it's little suction cups on it. Um, the USB cord, the only thing I have to say, the USB cord seems really thin, but it might be sufficient for what this is. Um, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not really aware too much about anything like this, but I'm going to try it. There's this little piece of paper. Make sure you install software. Disregard. Um, here's the testing disc for the ambient light. A weighted little rubber shelly thing. I don't even know what it is. The software. The software I won. And then, furthermore, your startup guide, which, from when I was trying to mess with my laptop to see if this thing actually worked, didn't make any sense at all in the slightest. Um, so, um, basically, I'm supposed to install the software first and then plug in the device and whatnot. So, we'll give the test first on my desktop and then onto my laptop. Alright, so let's test about how it installs the actual software. Um, again, uh, for my testing on my laptop, it doesn't, I guess, make sense. So it's very vague, I would say, the actual knowledge, but you're supposed to ma match is to get it so you get the installing of the software. But I, I don't know. It seems vague from what little I've used of it. It, I mean, it might it might be a very good professional tool, but um, it definitely seems vague. Write it onto my iDrive. Like I, not really. Bad pun. All right, so this is installing.
All right, so finally installed system requirements. Does that actually say it on the box? That's something I should look. I don't even see that mention on the box. Oh, no, it is. Well, it's not as detailed as it should be. With a lot of stuff. Um, okay, Windows, Windows Server. Of course, this is Windows 7, but this is... I guess this would probably be the older one because this is only XP. It doesn't even say Windows Vista. Nowhere. Yeah, it doesn't say no Windows. But wait, this was copyright 2007. Huh. That is strange. Either way, there's apparently Mac support for it too. Um. Okay, I gotta restart. Here. All right, so let's try it on the main monitor first. So select your profiling mode. I guess easy. Click the arrow. It is an LCD. Place I1 onto monitor. Huh, just noticed. On their display, if you can tell, it's like the logo on the thing is blue, but on the actual device, it's a white. Hmm. Interesting. So, I guess the thing is, you have to get this far enough down on the cord, get the cord like behind the monitor, and somehow get the cord to stay in that, which seems harder than it should be. And then you got sticky on that thing. Well, hmm. Um, I discovered one flaw with this. It does not like to stick up there. Now I gotta find where that rubber thing went to. Back in a second. All right, I'm back. I got my thing again, yay, for falling under the desk. I might be noticing a flaw with this product. Um, so place it onto here, okay. And then that's, I guess, between that and the stickiness on the screen. From, let's just damp these a little bit. Okay, place on to monitor. So I guess this is like recording um, the screen sections, I'm guessing. So now it's waiting. Whoa, okay, let's see what this warning is. Summary, monitor, all right, let me look. Color temperature scheme. Um, that's pretty good from what I know. Okay. Okay, so I, I there is a difference. I don't know if video quality you can see it or I, I can mean I can tell it. So I guess this is something like it's a routine. Okay, 
Well, now I have to go through the process on my other desktop monitor and my laptop. Um, I do have a printer, apparently. It works on printers somehow. Uh, but I really don't have the time to mess around testing that, so that might be another time for another day. So I will get on to the other monitor for testing, and I'll just tell you what I think of it when it's all said and done. Alright, so I have got all my monitors and my laptop color corrected, and short answer is I do notice a slight detail but I can't I think per se like my different branding monitors still have a different um slightly different color aspect but they are closer to the same so I mean I suppose that's good so I mean for how much I paid for it for 238 this was an incredibly good value, but is this worth a hundred dollars? Then it's on Amazon, and I mean, I, I'd have to check more online. Um, maybe. Um, but yeah, I tried also to get the Kodak AZ651 um, camera, like with the calibration settings, and I could not get it to recognize the camera, so. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I'm assuming the optic light tray is for maybe the printer or the scanner, which I did not have time to, at my disposal, a random printer to mess around with enough. So I, I can't do that now. Overall, uh, it's a neat device. Um, yeah, if you can pick one up pretty dang cheap and you sort of need correct colors, I mean, it might very well be worth it, but, um, let's say this much, I don't know if it's worth a hundred bucks, but that all depends on how much you're using it. Um, yeah, so, sh I mean, show your support if you like it. Also, comment if you would want me to do a teardown of this, which I'm more than willing to do because of how cheap I've got it, so... Um, I don't see that there's a teardown of it on the web. Oh, another point with it. This weight thing, if you, I mean, I guess the thing is, if you get it on the screen, it's, and you get it put, it stays put. But if you're not quite got it adjusted correctly, it's quite a pain to deal with. Um, but, yeah, there's a little weight for the cord, which should... I would have designed it slightly differently because the cord doesn't quite stay firmly in there, but I mean, like if your camera focuses on it, you see the groove spot. Um, eh, that's good. Either way, yeah, I couldn't get my uh, the, my Kodak AZ651 to correctly do it. Um, but uh, it's not bad. Um, yeah, I guess just comment uh, if you want me to do a teardown of it. I mean, I think this is pretty simple. It's just some light sensor in there reading off and whole whoops light sensor reading off and a whole bunch of sticky pads or you know suction cups in there. Uh, camera's not wanting to focus that close. Um, but yeah, I mean. I suppose it's good. Um, either way, this is Serpent of the Night, and thanks for watching.